Hey, welcome back to DIY Fab Shop. Today's project is about transforming your toolbox. It's going to be all about custom design and 3D printing socket organizer. Now, I realize not everybody has a 3D printer, but this video will provide some insights, even if you're not going to print some, on how a tool like this can be really beneficial in a workshop. And the technology continues to get better. They can print faster. They can print with multiple materials. The price point, you know, it's still kind of high for some of those advanced technologies, but it's getting better. And it becomes more affordable the more value you can get out of it, the more things you can do with it. And given that not everybody has a 3D printer or access to a 3D printer, I thought it'd be fun to give away to one of my viewers a custom socket organizer set that'll fit your needs. So when this video gets to 10,000 likes, I'll randomly select somebody to work with to create a custom socket organizer set for you. More details about that later. So really, the benefit of a 3D printed socket organizer is that it can handle every piece you have. So you can custom design it for your drawer, for your sockets, and you can make it with the style you want. You know, I think we've all probably used either a pin style or a magnet style. You know, I recently picked up this Tecton socket set, and this has a twist and lock rack. And, you know, it does a good job retaining the sockets, but it's just a little bit cumbersome to use. So I decided I would go with a magnet version because you can take the socket rack to your work area. It doesn't have to live in the box. So whether it's taking it to the race car, taking it to a piece of equipment to work on, the portability is pretty cool. All right, so before we start assembling some of these socket organizers, let's jump into the CAD model and I can show you the design architecture and the strategy I used to put together the CAD models to make them flexible so that I could make all the different derivatives I needed for my drawer, but also I tried to make it flexible so that you could get access via my website, go into Onshape, and actually modify it to fit your exact sockets if you so choose. I'll also have some STL files of some kind of standard sizes available for download if you want to give that a try, but really, I think the true value is if you take the time to go into Onshape and customize it for your exact needs. So let's jump into the CAD. As a reminder, the Onshape CAD program is a web-based software and it doesn't require a large download. And they will provide you a free license if you're just using it for making stuff. In other words, not for commercial use. And remember, you can go to DIYFabShop.com to get links to the CAD models I created and everything is free of charge. So the general form and layout of the rack should look very familiar in that it's like many of the commercial products that are out there that use a two row rack. I personally like to have my deep well sockets right behind the standard version. I put the socket size labels across the angled front face in order to try and balance between being able to read it from the front and read it from the top. The lettering is raised and I've been using the multi-material capability of my Bamboo X1 printer to print the raised labels in red for better readability. I also decided to add a handle to many of the racks I designed. The file links and the STL files on my website have both with and without handle versions. I chose handles as a visual reminder of the portability when I have friends working with me in the shop and it provides a finger purchase area for peeling it off a metal surface as the magnets that hold the sockets in also secure the rack to a metal surface. If you're trying to maximize how many racks can fit in a drawer, you may choose to leave the handles off. You've seen me waving around portions of the rack and talking about assembly. Those of you familiar with 3D printing know that I had to segment these racks to fit in the printing envelope of my printer. When I set off to design these racks, my goal was to come up with a way to join the rack segments and include magnets that was strong, secure, and not messy. In other words, no glue allowed. As I pull apart the model here, you can see that I have a separate part that I call a magnet retainer. This part slides into the bottom of the rack so that it's flush to the bottom of the rack and it has a flange that slides in over an undercut in the rack, keying it into place. You can see that once it's in place, it provides a nice little pocket for the magnet 
to sit in. Then to join the rack segments, I'm using a dovetail joint. On this segment, there's a female dovetail. On this segment, there's a male dovetail. And then you just slide them together. To make this as secure fit as possible, it is line to line tight at the end of engagement with just a little bit of draft on the surface to aid in assembly. An important design detail here is that I made the joint a blind pocket as to not see the dovetails protrude through the top surface. You know, details matter, and I believe even though this will live in a toolbox, aesthetics are important. So that was the basic architecture. Let's look at how it cascades to the rest of the organizer system. In the lower left is a stripped down version to accommodate spark plug sockets. It's small, doesn't need to be segmented. Above that is a single row for hex drive bits. And above that, you can see how the design scales up from small quarter inch drive sockets up to the top row, which is for half inch drive metric sockets. They get so big and heavy, I need to break up the design into three racks to accommodate the large range of sockets. Let's look at some of the modeling strategy I use to maximize the flexibility of the CAD. There's a master layout sketch which controls all the pocket sizes and the overall footprint. The pocket text labels are easily changed. Once the number and size of pockets are laid out, the location of the dovetail can be modified. And the pocket dimensions have had variables assigned and this table can use to make changes pretty quickly. From Onshape, we can export the STL files we need for 3D printing. I used PLA filament to print these as it is an easy to print resin that is surprisingly rigid and strong. My racks generally won't see extreme conditions or UV rays from being in direct sunlight. If yours will, you may want to consider a different resin. Last of the parts are done. Why don't you take a closer look and we'll put some of these together. All right, so while most of the racks are segmented into just two, this metric 3 8 drive one actually has three sections to make it fit in the 3D printer, just because this set has so many sockets. So coming out of the printer, um, this actually would have support material on it. One of the nice things about the bamboo printer is you can use the multi-material function and you can have the support material be a special resin that just barely sticks to the base resin and then use the base resin for the rest of the support and it's really easy to get off. You know, here is the support material that is down in the groove. You can see how easy it is to get off. And then that clear material is the special support material that just barely sticks. I generally just use a pick to get it out. Voila. Okay, so you can see how it's printed. It prints the troughs, prints an undercut for the handle, does the multi-material printing for the lettering. With all the support material removed, the first step is to put the magnet retainers in. Those just slide right in. Okay, so next I start sliding the magnets in. And you can see I have two different lengths and that's basically so I can mix and match and make sure that they more or less fill that slot. And it's important when putting them in to make sure that they attract to each other versus repel. So you just flip them over if that's the case. So I'm gonna start with long ones. So also important when you're starting to do the adjacent ones that you also have them attract versus repel. Find it's just a little bit easier that way. That one couldn't come out any closer. There 
And finally, the last one. So now if I get them too close together, the magnets are gonna jump across. So I have to be kind of deliberate when I put these together. I'm gonna get this one out of the way and I'm gonna bring these two together and, and I'm gonna join that dovetail to that one. And I'm gonna first start just going by hand. And the magnets jumped across, so I pushed them in. And this is where we go from hand force to brute force. Voila. Make sure everything's seated. Okay, just so you can see another quick demonstration. Here's a two-piecer. Magnets and retainers are already loaded. Start them out by hand. Make sure that everything's in place. All right, three last things to go over. First, if you want to see a video on how to really dig into the CAD models and customize these for yourself, I'm gonna create another video. Link will be in the description. It'll have a much more detail about how you go in and manipulate the model and some additional tips and trick. Two, you stuck around long enough to hear how to be eligible for the giveaway. All you have to do is subscribe, like, and in some way in the comments say, pick me. Again, when we get to 10,000 likes, I'm gonna randomly pick somebody. Have your notifications on so I can send you a reply and we can get coordinated to get you a set. And number three, I do have a quick teaser for an upcoming video that I wanna go through. Before that, let's just take a look at uh, the double function of a magnetic socket organizer. You know, like I said, one of the reasons I like him is you can take it to your work area. Now, clearly you don't do that with your significant other's nicely painted car, but a race car or any roadkill worthy hoopty, I mean, it's fair game, it works great. Let's check out the toolbox. All right, well, the shop is coming along. Started to organize things, obviously. Need to install that two post lift, but I did get the HVAC done. My teaser is I prefer to hang my combination wrenches from this wall control board. So I'm working on a design of a 3D printed system that'll allow these wrenches to get as close as possible together and provide a way to tag them. So that'll be a future video. So I hope you join me next time.
and we are white belt job.